Call, Beth Ann Hardison, here's Veronica Webb, these are my friends at Vogue. And then after that, yeah, it, it took off. I mean, because uh, I had this strong interest in fashion, I was always finding ways to incorporate that into my PR job. I, you know, born and bred New Yorker, parents are from Jamaica, didn't, they were very clear, you're not going away to school and get wrapped up in some fraternity and all that cra craziness. I was into journalism. I knew that at the time I was really into broadcast journalism, just magazines, writing, all of it. And NYU, of course, has one of the best journalism programs. So went there, the journalism program had a PR workshop that you had to um, complete. And the workshop really is what sparked it. And just by chance after the workshop, we all had to get an internship. I ended up being placed at this PR firm called Set to Run Public Relations, owned by Layla Turkan. She was best friends with like Russell Simmons and Lior Cohen. She was the music woman. All the labels, Atlantic, Sony, all of them hired Layla's company. We, she was doing Public Enemy, LL Cool J, Tribe Called Quest. In terms of hip hop, she had that on lock. And it was honestly the best thing ever because they didn't want the interns grabbing coffee or lunch. They, they had you helping to write releases. We were on set for photo shoots. We were, we were really in the mix of learning to that point. When I graduated, set to run, still came back and said we had a job for you and really that's how my PR career started. I was the New York kid. At that time, Def Jam didn't really have an in-house team. So we were like the in-house team. So when Russell created Fat Farm, it was just one of those things like, well, who's gonna work this? Because everyone's like, I know music. And I always had the interest in fashion and art. So they appointed me the account. Russell said, this is my Rolodex. Call Beth Ann Hardison. Here's Veronica Webb. These are my friends at Vogue. And then after that, yeah, it, it took off. I mean, which at the time, you know, it wasn't artists and, and managers and even the labels weren't like, oh yeah, we need Vogue or we need GQ or we need, you know, and no, it was like, where's, you know, Billboard vibe and so-and-so. Um, but somewhere in the mix, I connected with the fashion editors, the photographers, and was slowly helping to create these stories. Because uh, I had this strong interest in fashion, I was always finding ways to incorporate that into my PR job. It, it somehow took off, you know? I remember <clears throat> I was still, before I left Set to Run, I was working um, LL Cool J, and he was planning a tour, and I don't know who said something about Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I took it upon myself to get to Jean-Paul. Next thing I know, we're having lunch in New York with Jean-Paul Gaultier, his right-hand Lionel, and LL, and me talking about looks for the tour. I mean, when I look back, I'm like, how did I do that? Like, you know, but I did. I made these connections, but again, I was one of those, I was one of those young people that, I guess coming from New York, there was no idea of a no, or it can't happen. And the people I worked with at the time, they said, make it happen, and you made it happen. If we really, really pay attention, this thing that we're seeing today isn't new. It started with those girls like Foxy, Eve, Kim, Little Kim. And because we have to remember, Foxy was in a Calvin Klein jeans campaign. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's like David LaChapelle shot Little Kim for the cover of Interview with LVs all over her body. Like, again, I. The creative, actually, I feel like I was so fortunate because I came up during a time where 
the, the possibilities were endless because the budgets were bigger. Like, if we had to do a reshoot, there was a reshoot. You know, there was no such thing as, oh, yeah, retouch it and we'll see what we can get out of it. No, it's like, let's do over the shoot. Let's make, let's shoot another video because this one didn't turn out the way we expected. And, and you pushed it till you got to that point where um, it was great. Not good, but great. What I'm doing now is cre helping to create an interesting visual story that then has the media world a little bit more interested in biting and finding out more. You know, I mean, Usher was one of, I would say Usher and Outkast were one of the first that honestly went, started going to the shows in Milan and Paris and and this was before the front rows were crowded with you know the rappers singers actors and stuff i mean this was late 90s early 2000s you know and it was the beginning of what we're seeing today i mean and but i will say this that for me it's it was never let's go to the shows to get pictures well, there was no Instagram and whatnot. It was more about building relationships. You know, relationships that you hope will lead to um, those things that either I envisioned for the artist or that they envisioned. Whether it was a capsule collection, whether it was a campaign, something. Mr. Armani created a made-to-measure line with Usher's name in it. Outcast Andre created his line eventually to me when you say you're an artist that means that you're not only creating the sound but you visually are should be telling me and and the team what what are those things that move you visually that stimulate you because i feel like i'm just the catalyst to help connect it and and put it out there but i want you to tell me you know what i you know i feel like green here is right now is where I'm at and like you know how do we make this a moment without me looking like a clown or looking like I'm trying too hard and we go through ideas and thoughts and and you know I bring in hopefully if I if I'm my hands aren't aren't held bring in the team around you to help shape the vision you know and and that to me is really what I love to do, you know, I, cause for me, an artist should be the whole 360, like you're making amazing music, you're telling us what the dialogue is, what the, what the visual dialogue is, and then the team is taking all your notes and just helping you now create it, bring it to, bring it out. And, and yeah, that's, you know, so for me, I am very picky about who I work with because I have to believe and I have to like respect what this person is doing and then I feel like that's how we come in and are able to be the best that we are. Yeah, I've worked with everyone from Mariah to Tony Braxton to uh, Usher to Drake, I mean Future. and. The personalities are really all different in terms of their character, what you know they feel comfortable in doing, and how far they're willing to go. And then there are, other, there are times where, yeah, they're, they've, they've learned and understand the, um, the process where they might get to a point where, you know what, I'm ready to push it a little further. And we'll go a little further. And then there are other times where the individual may feel like more safe in a certain space. And you respect that. Because I've also been in situations where you thrust somebody into a space that they're not ready for and you can see it. You can see that they're uncomfortable. You're not really getting that magic out of them because they, they may not be ready yet. And that's okay as well. We went to Paris for men's 
we went to the show, which, you know, we were, he was invited and, and we all were like, listen, Bianca is amazing. She's like one to definitely watch. And it was, it, I loved those moments because it's like we were at the show. I think Usher was completely wowed. We met her backstage and you could see there was a natural connection to a point that it was like two days after that or so, we invited her to the hotel to have brunch and that was an organic, natural, you know, conversation. And and from there, they, without me, had their own conversation going through WhatsApp and calls and whatever. And that's what I love because I can come in and, you know, do what I do, but it really, I think the magic is there when it naturally evolves into like a real relationship. So by time Bo, by time Anna invited Bianca to the Met, they didn't even know that Usher and Bianca had a relationship. You know, so it really, that particular situation is exactly how I love to work. Because I, I like to come in, set the thing, and then see it grow naturally and, and in an in a organic kind of way. And I remember we were at brunch in Paris and I said to Bianca, and she'll say it as well, I said, you know what, you need to have your folks work on getting you to the Met Gala because I think it's just one of those things that, again, as you're building your relationships in America, Everyone will be in the room. It'll be a good starting point. And it's like the universe just had it all in place between February and May. And it just worked. And yeah, and Usher believes in her. He supports everything she's doing. And, you know, and again, she's so talented. Erica and I have known each other for many years because I was D'Angelo's publicist and I met Erica when Kedora Massenburg brought her to New York from Dallas and there was a long friendship before we even worked together but Erica's always been a person that musically of course she I mean she stimulates all of us I mean the music what she creates it, it's, it's just special but visually as well it always caught my attention. It was always, looking at Erica just allowed my mind to be free in terms of, my God, the possibilities with her because just beautiful and then her own style and, and the confidence of how she moves through the world. And so when we started working together and, you know, again, someone that her own style evolved over the years where, you know, in the beginning she wore, she was only wearing black designers and independent designers and then started to incorporate, you know, the bigger fashion houses into her whole palette and then to see how she mixes and, and tosses this whole thing up and it works for her working with Solange like when I worked with Solange it was so it was it was such a a great experience to see someone that I mean we didn't have to have a stylist in between um, an editorial shoot like Solange would get on the phone with the fashion team in house and 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 talk about the looks that she wanted them to pull. So basically, she was the stylist and the market editor. Oh, can you pull Resort Five from? Uh, can you pull Summer Twenty Three from? So, who does that? I mean, Erica is it and her are very similar in that sense where they take the time, they go online, they look at the collections. I just love when an artist to me is dictating this is who I am instead of you creating it because that's when it's more exciting I was friends with this creative director who's well known in fashion David Lipman he has the company the Lipman group big campaigns and David 
how could this massive shoot together with Mario Sorrenti shooting it for Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone had never done a fashion story like this. This was more on the level of old, like, faux days of, like, shooting on location, you know, Winnebago's catering, blah, blah, the whole thing. It was, it was like a multi-day shoot. And between Andre 3000 and Kate Moss, and it was pure cinematic. I mean, it was more like shooting a movie. It, I mean, the experience alone was one that I never ever forget and it's something that I always go back to because it was the first time in my career where I felt like I had reached a certain place of the standard of where I'm working and the, the level that I was working at and the people, the creatives that I was now working alongside. Like, at, by then, it was, I've already had shot with, you know, Annie Leibovitz, you know, D D uh, David LaChapelle, all of the, all of the greats. That particular shoot made me realize that I kind of, I, I, in my own weird way, broke through a ceiling. Because I think, you know, technically I was a, a music publicist still at the time. I didn't have my own company yet. I was still at Sony BMG or whatever. And, but no one was doing that. No one even had the vision to do that. I don't really care if you're an assistant or a director or a VP or a PR manager, or whatever. I want to hear everyone's thoughts because I just feel like that's how we win. Again, it leads to greatness. Like for me, I don't believe in okay. I barely believe in good. I believe in great. Even the bad experiences, if you really take a step back, you realize that even those hard knocks or those walls or whatever, that period, that experience, hopefully you walked away with more knowledge. Maybe a one or two or three little bumps, but I have to say for the most part, I've had an amazing career. The way I came up in the business, the people that nurtured me, I was so fortunate to have people that believed in me and pushed me. I never felt like anyone ever tried to hold me back. Actually, they were like, no, fly, you're bigger. You know, I think for me, I just want people to, when they mention the chamber group or myself to, um, that it's always in the vein of respect and, and understanding like my contributions. I was fortunate, the, intern, the internship programs I did were all amazing in terms of people wanted me to learn. I was never someplace where I wasn't being pushed to walk away with something. And so for me, the interning um, portion of the chamber group has always been really important to me because I don't want anyone coming in here and never feeling like at the end of the program that they've learned that they're walking away with more knowledge that it either gave them an insight that this is for me or that it isn't so i'm you know it's something i watch really carefully and most of our interns happy to say either have been hired by me as you know entry level positions assistants pr coordinators whatever and have grown and now are superstars elsewhere, you know, VPs and directors and whatever in, you know, different forms of um, not just entertainment, just I think anything to do with visuals. And, and that makes me feel really good. And people have said, yes, you create, you've created a lot of PR stars and, and great executives. And that to me, I feel like that's my job now. I am so about helping nurture those future executives. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate. Can I'm blessed.